Kyoto um, for the second time of Global Possum. And he will talk about uh, um, Fong S the diffusion of uh, dif differentiation and Fong S the integration. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Well, first of all, thanks to Antoinette Nikita for creating this seminar, which is uh, such a wonderful opportunity to meet you folks in spite of these strange times. So I've, I've seen that uh, I'm myself actually listed as a seminar organizer, which is a little bit strange because my only role in this has been to say yes. <laughs> and yeah, in particular, when, when Anton asked me if I can give a talk, I, I said yes. Uh, I only said uh, that, that uh, I want many other speakers before me. So for that reason, he put me as number two. Okay, uh, I've spoken about this uh, material uh, on a number of occasions, I mean, in earlier versions of this material. So some of you will have heard part of this talk before, but I promise that even for, for, for those of you who have heard this talk before, there will be a few new things, uh, things that uh, Maria and I have figured out recently. So. This talk is joint work, uh, well, with Maria uh, Amira Zalazar, who is also in the audience, uh, and with David, who's probably not in the audience, uh, from a few years back. So David, as some of you may know, uh, is now um, uh, working in machine learning. And as far as I understand, he's working for some small company uh, whose um, plan is to develop methods for more efficient and faster uh, testing of drugs. And so, so one will imagine that this is very timely now. Okay, so uh, let me start with some, some overview of uh, um, the material. So what this Van map is about. So Van map is about comparing group code chains and Lie algebra code chains. So if you have any Lie group G, there's the corresponding group co-chain complex. So I'm, I'm looking at smooth group cohomology. So the P co-chains in this complex are smooth functions on P copies of G, on G to the power of P. And then there's this uh, differential, which is given by a somewhat strange formula, which starts looking less strange uh, once you think about G to the P as a simplicial manifold, because then it's just a simplicial differential. But in any case, uh, many of you will have, of course, have seen this formula before. So this is the uh, group co-chain complex. And then there's also corresponding, uh, well, there's also a Lie algebra co-chain complex, which you're probably even more familiar with, the chevalier eilenberg complex, where the co-chains are uh, the elements of the exterior power of G star. And the differential is the chevalier eilenberg differential, which I'm not even going to write down because you certainly all know this one. One way to understand this um, chevalier eilenberg complex is to identify elements of wedge of G star with left invariant differential forms on G. So if you make that identification, I mean on the group G, if you make that identification, then the chevalier eilenberg differential is just the Dram differential on left invariant differential forms. So it's something very familiar. So we'd like to uh, understand the relationship between this group complex and Lie algebra complex. So in, in some way, the Lie algebra complex should be the infinitesimal version of the group complex, but how can you make this precise? And this was made precise by Van Est in 1953. So here's a picture of Van Est and a statement of his uh, first main result. So what he did in his 1953 paper was to construct a, a, an explicit co-chain map from Lie group, pro, Lie group co chains to Lie algebra co chains. So some kind of differentiation map. And he also proved that in cohomology, it induces an isomorphism in low degrees. So low degree, depending on the connectivity properties of the group G, if the group G is n connected, then up to degree n, it's an isomorphism. That's what he proved. So looking at these old Van Es papers is actually somewhat amusing because um, he starts out um, with, with some very elementary uh, exposition of just differential forms. So he assumes that the reader does not know what a differential form is. 
but he ends up talking about spectral sequences. So it's, it's kind of interesting. So as I said, it's an isomorphism in low degrees. Uh, if you work instead of uh, all group code chains uh, with just germs of functions, so germs at the group unit. It's kind of terrible terminology in these days, but what can you do? Uh, then you actually get an isomorphism in all degrees. So this, this was um, explicitly uh, worked out by, by these two authors independently. Right, so this is one of, of uh, several theorems that are uh, called Van Est theorems. Another uh, important theorem of Van Est was proved two years later. So this is an, his 1955 paper where he says explicitly, what is the smooth cohomology? Any question? Where he explicitly says, well, this is smooth uh, group cohomology. So it turns out, if, if, for example, the group G is compact, um, it's rather disappointing. The cohomology is just zero, at least in positive degrees. And in general, uh, the situation is this. Uh, you consider the maximal compact subgroup of G. Then uh, the smooth group cohomology, the cohomology of the smooth group, group uh, co-chain complex, is the cohomology of the K basic subcomplex of the Lie algebra complex. So K basic means uh, things annihilated by contraction with Lie algebra elements of K and also K invariant. So this is the precise statement. So in, in this paper, he didn't give an explicit co-chain map that realizes this. Um, an explicit co-chain map was given by uh, other authors uh, in the 1970s, I think, again, independently of each other. Uh, but it's a co-chain map in the other direction. This is kind of Van Est integration map, which goes from the K-basic subcomplex of the Lie algebra G to um, functions on G to the P so to the coaching complex of the group G. And they prove that this uh, realizes the isomorphism using some spectral sequence ideas and so on. So this was all about uh, Lie groups and Lie algebras. Um, but the story here also has been generalized to Lie group poids and Lie algebraids. So the first steps in this direction were done by uh, Alan Weinstein and Ping Shu, who constructed a code chain map from a group poid co code chain complex to the Lie algebraid code chain complex. I will explain later how this group poid co code chain complex goes, but in first approximation, it's just the same. So, so they, they construct this map, they prove that it's a code chain map. And if you work with the so-called normalized code chains, it's even an algebra morphism, which is very interesting. Uh, the analogs of Van Est theorems uh, were then proved a few years later by uh, Marius Kreinich. So of, of bo both versions of, of Van Est theorems, he has analogs. Right, and in this paper with, with David, um, we gave an alternative construction of this Van Est map of Weinstein and Xu um, using uh, the so-called perturbation lemma. And so this is basically the direction most of this talk will uh, be centered about. We also briefly uh, mentioned that you get a code chain map in the opposite direction. So again, one has to work with a localized complex for, for this to work. Um, but uh, we, we didn't really identify what this code chain map and what this integration map actually is. I mean, we explained how to construct it, but we uh, didn't get very far with its properties. And so we were quite interested when uh, two years later, um, uh, Alejandro Cabrera, Yunut Makut, and uh, Maria Salazar actually gave an explicit formula for a right inverse. So, so, so they, they actually uh, showed that it's not just a right inverse in homotopy, it's a right inverse on the level of code chains. So th this I, I found very, very interesting. So a Van Est integration map, which goes the other direction and which literally is a right inverse on the level of code chains. And of course, this is something that I, I want to understand. So first of all, uh, I want to understand why is it the right inverse? Um, can I explain this with, with this perturbation lemma? And um, yeah, is, is it the same map as, as uh, what uh, David and I had suggested back then? 
So we dis started discussing this with Maria and uh, yeah, we sorted it out. So the objectives of, of this work or, and of this talk are, first of all, the conceptual understanding of all these maps. So by conceptual understanding, I mean um, getting these maps without, um, well, just guessing the maps and then checking the properties, but actually obtaining this map in, in some sort of canonical way. And to get all the properties um, without any uh, grand calculations. So this should all be automatic from double complex and, and uh, perturbation lemma. Yeah, and then as I said, to show that the, the maps of uh, Maria and co-authors and uh, David and co-author uh, are the same. And in doing so, uh, we, we discovered even f uh, f for the uh, old Van S map, just for Lie groups, there are some explicit formulas, uh, which apparently, um, I mean, it's not a big deal, but it seems like, like they've been missed by, uh, by the early authors. And so for most of this talk, I will actually just talk about um, the group case. All right, so this is uh, the preparation. And so let's get started. So I'm going to get started uh, by reviewing the perturbation lemma. So this material has nothing to do with uh, the finesse uh, map. It's, it's a general thing about double complexes, which is good to know anyway, so if you don't already know it. So let's uh, review the perturbation lemma. So the setting is that we have some double complex. So a bi-graded um, vector space with two differentials, D and del. And my conventions for double complex is that these differentials uh, commute in the graded sense. So since they commute in the graded sense, uh, D plus del becomes a differential on the total complex. Of course, the total complex is when you uh, take the sums along diagonals. Right, and, and so in, in typical applications, we are interested in the cohomology of this total complex, but maybe not just in the cohomology, we may also want to understand it on the level of co-chains. So this situation, uh, I want to assume is that we don't just have a, a double complex, we also have augmentation maps. So there's, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the situation with two augmentation maps. There's a, a vertical complex, which I denote by X, uh, on which I have a differential D with an inclusion into my double complex. So basically I'm, I think of this uh, vertical complex X as a double complex itself, where the horizontal differential is just zero. So it just has one column. And then it's a horizontal map of double complexes. And likewise, this horizontal complex, I think of it as a double complex and the, the vertical inclusion J is a morphism of double complexes. Right, so this is the, the picture I, ha I have in my applications. And now the one more ingredient uh, I want to assume is that we have a homotopy operator, but just for the horizontal direction. So this, this inclusion uh, of X is actually a, a homotopy equivalence, but uh, with respect to, to del. Uh, so so, so the, we, we're kind of ignoring the, the uh, differential D for the time being, and we're just looking at the horizontal differential del. And we're assuming uh, for this differential, we, we have a homotopy. So an operator H such that H times del plus del times H is the identity minus the projection, the projection onto X, which is given by um, uh, I times P. Right, and now the point of uh, the perturbation lemma is uh, that you can take this horizontal homotopy and turn it into a homotopy for the total complex. So there's a simple trick, very, very simple, uh, how to change this H into some H prime so that it becomes a homotopy operator for the total complex. So, so now, now we're actually turning on the differential D also. And yeah, this is how it goes on the next slide. So again, a reminder our situation is that we have a homotopy operator for the horizontal complex. 
and now we want to uh, modify it a little bit. And it's done by these formulas. So H prime is H composed with one plus DH inverse and P prime similarly. So in these formulas, uh, one plus DH inverse is defined as a geometric series. So you expand it. And for degree reason, uh, this geometric series is actually finite. So, so eventually the terms just add, add a zero. So it's, you can think of it as a finite series. So on, on any given element of, of some fixed by degree, it, it's, it's a finite series. Right, and, and then the simple statement is that this H prime now is a homotopy operator for the total complex with a slightly modified projection. So that's all. So it's a very useful little lemma. And I should emphasize the proof is really quite easy. I'm not, not spelling out the proof here, um, but it's a direct verification. It's really an exercise. So you basically take this um, identity, you multiply it maybe from uh, the right by one plus dh, and I think from the left by one plus hd. You expand both sides and you observe that they're equal. That's, that's about all. It takes just two, three lines. Very, very easy lemma. There are more sophisticated versions of this lemma. I'm, I'm just using the simplest version because the simplest version is really good enough for me. Okay, so the, the upshot then is that, uh, well, we have our total complex with these two inclusion maps. Right, so, so both of these maps are co-chain maps into the total complex. But using this uh, modified homotopy, I can, so to speak, invert one of the co-chain maps this map I, and then I really get a co-chain map from Y to X, right? because this I has been replaced with a map going in the opposite direction. So this is the principle uh, of this perturbation lemma. Any questions? Which brown? Is there any question? Which brown? Oh, which brown? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, Rod, Ronnie Brown. <laughs> yes. Sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we can think of this uh, map that we get also as a zigzag. So as I was saying, this one plus dh you expand as a geometric series. But as, if you look at it uh, as a map from um, y to the p to x to the p, then actually just one single term of this geometric series survives in the end, which is this term minus dh to the power p. I'm sorry, there are two different p's in the, in the formula. Uh, p uh, superscript is always somewhat slanted. And then there's a the projection p, but I wasn't able to change that in such a short notice. Any case, so just this one term actually survives. And then you can think of this formula as a zigzag, which goes from the uh, lower right corner to the upper left corner. So starting from y, you apply the operator j, this inclusion map, then you apply homotopy operator h, you apply d, you apply my h, d, and so on, and then eventually you apply p. So you zigzag your way from the lower right corner to the upper left corner. So it's a zigzag. All right, so, so here's one uh, nice example of this perturbation lemma, which is the check de Ram double complex. So we, we consider a manifold uh, with an open cover. At this point, I don't make any assumptions for the cover. And if you look at this uh, check de Ram double complex, so the P cochains or PQ cochains are Q forms on P plus one fold intersections. And there are two differentials on this complex. One is the Deram differential, just raising, ra raising the uh, differential form degree by, by one. And then there's a check differential, which is alternating some and, uh, pullbacks under these, all these inclusion maps that you have. Right, and then you get this beautiful double complex with two augmentation maps. So in, in this picture, the left column is the usual Deram complex. And this bottom row is the usual check complex. 
So this R underline means uh, locally constant functions uh, on P plus one fold intersections. So in this uh, check the RAM double complex, uh, you just take any functions and in this bottom row, you just take, take locally constant functions. And the map J is the obvious inclusion then of locally constant functions to all functions. And the map I is, is, is pullback map. So uh, in this uh, first column of the double complex, uh, you look at uh, Q forms on just open sets and you just pull back forms on M to, to, to these open sets. So that's the inclusion map I. So there's, there's this uh, double complex and there's two uh, augmentation maps. And now what I would like to have is a horizontal homotopy operator. So if I have any partition of unity, that gives a horizontal homotopy operator. Um, given by some explicit formulas, you somewhat patch together forms on P plus one fold uh, overlaps and make this into form on P fold overlaps. So it's a formula which you can easily guess and, and then you can easily check it. So we're exactly in our situation, we have this horizontal homotopy operator. So in, the, in this uh, diagram with the two maps, J and I, these two inclusions, we can invert the second map and we get a co-chain map from uh, the check complex to differential forms on M. So it's, it's a very explicit map, um, but we don't quite understand yet what it is. So somehow what it does is it's, uh, it takes a, a P co-chain in the check sense, uh, it somehow applies differentials and homotopy operators and then produce a differential form. Uh, if, you, if you assume that you have a good cover so the, the intersections are all contractible, then this is actually a quasi-isomorphism. And you can construct the homotopy inverse to this map uh, in a similar way. So, so this time you get a vertical homotopy operator and so that gives then the map in the other direction. So it's somewhat amusing to, to uh, look at the book by um, Bot and Two because they actually uh, construct this uh, check the RAM uh, co-chain map. And what they uh, write is that they basically got this formula by trial and error. They wrote that this very not very intuitive formula uh, was obtained after repeated tries by careful bookkeeping. So, so they use this um, example basically to illustrate spectral sequences. And so, so they first give a proof using spectral sequences of this check RAM isomorphism on the level of homology. And then they show that you can also get something on the level of co-chains by careful bookkeeping. But it turns out you actually don't even need spectral sequences at all to get the check RAM uh, isomorphism. You can just use the perturbation lemma and that's all you need. So you can easily cover uh, this check the RAM isomorphism um, in, a, in a graduate course on, on, on manifolds uh, without using any spectral sequences. All right, there's one more thing I need about this perturbation lemma. Uh, a, a little fact that was proved in this uh, paper of Maria and myself, which may already be known, I don't know. Um, so, so let's assume uh, we are in this situation that we have both a horizontal homotopy operator and a vertical operator. So then we get zigzag maps in both directions. One going from the co-chain complex Y to the co-chain complex X and one going the other way. And you uh, might hope that they're inverses to each other on the co-chain level. In, in general, that's not going to be true. So, so there has to be some condition on, on these homotopy of this H and K so that they would actually be inverses in some sense. And we found that um, uh, yeah, if you just assume H composed K is, is zero. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so j j maybe I'm completely confused, but in one of them shouldn't be the other differential. Uh, oh, I yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, there's a typo there. Yeah, so in the, in the formula for Psi, this should be the differential del. Yeah. Hi, Anton. Hi. Yeah, that's a typo. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm? Yeah, so if you, if you assume uh, these homotopy H and H and K have the uh, possibility, uh, excuse me, have, have the property H composed K is zero, 
and also projection P compose K zero. Then this map psi is actually the right inverse, a uh, right inverse to the map phi. And the proof is basically, um, yeah, looking at these zigzags. You have these two zigzags, uh, one going from um, X all the way uh, to the lower right corner, and then going back from Y to the upper left corner. And what we have to argue somehow is uh, that we can cancel arrows. So this, at the very end, this uh, Q compose J, uh, we can just replace with the identity map. So using our relations, we, we have an argument that we can omit this arrow. And, and so we can shorten our zigzag like this. And then we can argue that this del compose H, we can also just omit. And so successively we shorten the arrows until we just end up with the identity map and that's QED. Of course, this is a short version of, of the proofs. So you have to somehow argue why you can do this, but uh, this is the basic idea. All right, so, so much for perturbation lemma. And now I wanna apply this to uh, Van S maps, as I said. So for, for now, I will mostly concentrate on just Lie groups and Lie algebras, not on the group poet case yet. So recall our cochain complex in this case is smooth functions on G to the P. And the Lie algebra complex is the exterior algebra of G dual with the chevalier eilenberg differential. So the first thing we need is a, a double complex. And actually, if you look at Van Ness, uh, papers, uh, he already discusses this double complex in, in, in his papers. So the double complex he uses is uh, smooth functions on G to the P times G. So one more copy of G uh, with values in a wedge of G star. So there are two differentials on this. One is some complicated looking uh, simplicial differential, which looks complicated, but again, has a very simple explanation once you, once you think about this properly in terms of simplicial manifolds. And then there's a chevalier eilenberg differential, but uh, not just acting on the last factor. Um, so you have uh, chevalier eilenberg differentials with values uh, for for uh, G representations. And the G representation in this case is the space of smooth functions on G to the P times G, where the G action in question is just a multiplication on the right, uh, on the last factor. So this is the chevalier eilenberg differential one has to use. And yeah, this is a double complex. So here's the double complex in its full beauty. Oh, yeah, this, I didn't rememorize all my slides. <laughs> so there are also two augmentation maps. Uh, there's an inclusion map of this uh, wedge of G star, just as, as constants, pullback, so to speak. And then there's an inclusion of smooth functions on G to the P uh, at level Q equals zero, which is also just a pullback. Just pullback under a projection to the first G to the P uh, factor. All right, and so here comes the double complex in its full glory with its two augmentation maps. On the left column, we have the chevalier eilenberg complex. On the bottom row, we have this uh, group co-chain complex. And they get put together with a double complex. Yeah, I, sh I should mention already that uh, if you have a subgroup, um, of the, your group G, a subgroup K, which doesn't have to be complex, which doesn't have to be compact, excuse me, then all, all of this uh, restricts to the K basic subcomplexes. So you only have this uh, actually for these um, parts which involve wedge of G star and for the double complex itself. So for wedge of G star, you can look at the K basic subcomplex annihilated by contraction with K and K invariant. And you have the same thing um, for the big double complex, but for the bottom row, there, there's no K in the picture anymore. But it's also interesting to look at this double complex just, just if K is trivial. 
it's just just want to have this more general aspect also. Okay, now what we need is some uh, horizontal homotopy operator. And yeah, so, so we get this uh, if the group K is compact, so in particular if the group K is trivial. So, so the, again, the com complex, the double complex in question is uh, smooth functions on G to the P times G with values in wedge of G star, which are K basic. And the horizontal homotopy operator is the following. So first of all, if, if the group uh, K is, is just trivial, it's given by this uh, bottom line of this uh, box. So, so we have uh, a smooth function on G to the P times G, and we need to uh, produce a, a smooth function on G to the P minus one times G. And the way you do this, uh, except for the sign, is you just put a, an identity element, a group unit in, into the last slot. So it's kind of the simplest map that you can pos possibly imagine. And you uh, check that this works if you just put the right sign. So this is in case uh, the group K is trivial. And if the group K is compact, we take the same map. Uh, but the problem is uh, this map doesn't preserve the K basic subcomplex. So, but all you have to do is just take the map and compose it with averaging another group action. And this you can do if the group K is compact. So averaging using an integration, of course. Integration using high measure of the group K. So there is a homotopy operator. And so we are in business and we get a code chain map. So there's a, a map from uh, the code chain complex of the group G to this K basic subcomplex of the Lie algebra G. So we just get it for free. We, and, and we know already that it's a cochain map. The only question now is, is uh, what actually is this map? So we would like to give a formula. But it's really not hard at all to just uh, follow through this zigzag and, and figure out what this map does. And the uh, description we got out of this um, is the following. Um, yeah, it involves. Um, the group action on, on G to the P. Actually, there are lots of G actions on G to the P. Uh, in fact, P plus one different commuting G actions on G to the P. You can multiply uh, from the left and you can multiply in the middle. I mean, there, there, there are lots of group actions. So I'm, I'm combining them all into a G to the P plus one action given by this formula. I can restrict this action to a k to the p plus one action. And there's an averaging operation for that. So, so th this is what I'm using on the group cochain complex. And yeah, so the description we get of the Van S map is then uh, the following. So the Van S map for G mod k is a composition of this averaging operation with a Van S map for the group G. And the Van S map for the group G um, can be described as follows. So you take your uh, function F, which is a smooth function on G to the P, but you view it as a, a smooth function on G to the P with values in wedge of G star. And then you take uh, a chevrolet eilenberg differential of this uh, function, but for a certain G action. So you have to pick the right G action on G to the P plus one. So this is this DP. And then we take another trivially I make differential for, for, for a different G action. So, so the, the, those G actions I'm considering here, they don't, don't actually commute. So it's very important which order we use. So we get this composition of trivially I make differentials all for different G actions. So eventually I, I end up with some uh, smooth function on G to the P with values in wedge of P, G, uh, wedge P of G star. And then I restrict that to the group unit. And so this is the prescription we get for, for the finesse map. So this is one of, of several uh, versions of finesse map. There's also more standard version, which you might find simpler, but I just want to show this formula be just because it's different. 
And I believe that the fact that uh, the Vaness map for G mod K, uh, that, that, that you have a Vaness map for G mod K, which is simply averaging uh, under the group uh, K to the P plus one, followed by the Vaness map for G. I, I don't think this was actually known before, but I, I may be wrong. We haven't found this in the literature. So th this Vaness map that, that we uh, derived here, th this really is the standard Vaness map. So you can also derive the other more standard formula, which I'm getting to later. All right, but now we're also interested in, in Van S integration in, in the map going the other direction. And for doing that, um, yeah, we prefer to um, use a slightly different viewpoint. So this ba K basic subcomplex, uh, we now prefer to view as differential forms on the homogeneous space G mod K, which are G invariant, right? That's the standard isomorphism between G invariant forms on, on the uh, homogeneous space G mod K and the K basic subcomplex on a wedge of G star. So this viewpoint is, is more convenient for us. And we use the same viewpoint for the double complex. So now the double complex get view, gets viewed as smooth functions on G to the P with values and Q forms on the homogeneous space G mod K. The vertical differential, uh, this trivially Allenberg differential just becomes the Duran differential now. And now finally, we, we are uh, making the assumption that K is actually the maximal compact subgroup of G. So G can be any, uh, say, connected Lie group. No other assumptions on, on the group G, but any connected Lie group has a maximal compact subgroup uh, and uh, the property of this maximal compact subgroup is that the homogeneous space G mod K is actually uh, contractible. Yeah, so it's isomorphic uh, with the Lie algebra quotients G mod K. Um, of course, if the group G is semi-simple, um, this, this is uh, uh, e even more explicit. It's very, very canonical because you have the Cartan decomposition, uh, the KP decomposition. But yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's true for any, any D group. Yeah, but, but I should emphasize, for, for, so for, for same as simple D groups, uh, this isomorphism of the homogeneous space G mod K with the vector space is actually even canonical. For, for in the general case, it's not. Right, and so once we have this uh, identification, of course, the vector space G mod K um, is as natural retraction onto the uh, origin, and so there's a Dram homotopy operator. And this gives uh, the, the vertical homotopy operator in our double complex. So we have a vertical homotopy operator, and hence we are in business. Uh, we get our zigzag going the other way, and we get a Van S integration map, which now goes from K basic. Uh, co-chains for the Lie algebra into the co-chain co -chain complex for the group G. And again, just from, from general principles, we know already that this map is a co-chain map. We don't have to check anything. Just follows by perturbation lemma. And it's also pretty easy to check that uh, these conditions that we had on, on the two multiple operators, because we now have this horizontal homotopy operator and we have the um, vertical homotopy operator at the same time. It satisfies these conditions that, that we uh, state as, as, a, as a lemma earlier on. And so we know already that this integration map ends up being a right inverse to the Van S map that I've constructed before. So, so all of this is, is clear from the start and, and the only question now remaining is what actually is this integration map? So can, can we give an actual formula for it? And yeah, you, you can uh, by just following through what this zigzag actually does and what it means. So again, we're using this identification between the K basic subcomplex and differential forms on G mod K. So an element alpha and wedge of G star gets viewed as a differential form. And then the formula uh, you, you get 
is uh, the following. So um, there is a certain map gamma depending on p elements of, of the group G, which goes from a p cube, p cube uh, into uh, the homogeneous space G mod K. Then we have this differential form on G mod K, which we just pull back under that map. So then we have a differential p form on a p dimensional cube and we integrate. So this is the map that we get out of uh, our construction just by calculation. So I should explain what, what is this map gamma? This map from the cube into uh, the homogeneous space G mod K. Um, okay, so it associates to every element in the P cube in an element of G mod K. And what you do is um, you just start with the base point in G mod K. You apply the group element G sub P. You uh, rescale by T sub P you apply the group element G sub P minus one and so on. You just keep doing this P times. And the final result is this element of G mod K that you use. This is the map. Now I should say that this, this integration map uh, that we get here is not new. Um, oops, it's not new because it, it appears already in the work of, of Maria and her co-authors uh, I should say in the case that K is uh, trivial. Yeah, and I, I guess in, 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 in the general case, uh, when K is compact subgroup, it's, it's maybe new. Uh, but, but it's uh, slightly different from uh, the integration maps that I mentioned earlier uh, due to these authors, uh, Tischler, Guichardet, and, um, and Dupont, uh, who work with a simplex instead of a P cubed. I'm not sure if, if, if the formula of the simplex would actually give a right inverse on the level of co-chains that I just don't know. Okay, so, so much for uh, the groups. And, and now I, I briefly wanna talk about Lie groupoids and Lie algebroids also. How it generalizes to Lie groupoids and Lie algebroids. And one might say it's it's kind of straightforward now that we have all the ideas in place. So I don't have to tell you much about uh, Lie groupoids. So let's just fix the notation. We have some manifold of arrows. Uh, the units of the uh, Lie groupoid I simply view as a submanifold. Uh, we have the source and target map from a groupoid uh, onto the units and I view uh, any groupoid element as an arrow from its source to the corresponding target. Multiplication is concatenation of arrows. Uh, the way the units are embedded, uh, I just view them as trivial arrows sitting at one point and not doing anything. And inversion is uh, just reversing an arrow. For the double complex, I'm going to need this space of P arrows. So these are also known as, as composable arrows. Well, illustrated by the picture what it is. So it sits inside G to the P. It's just the, the sources and targets have to match properly. And this is, is a simplicial manifold. Uh, so they are face maps and degener degener degeneracy maps. So face maps uh, go from P arrows to P minus one arrows. And the way they work is, it's really the easiest way to remember how they go is, is they drop uh, one of the base points. So for example, if, if you uh, wanna look at the face map uh, del one, you have to drop the base point M1. And the only way to do this is to multiply the arrows G1 and G2 together. And yeah, likewise, you, you get all, all these um, face maps, usually multiplying elements together and at the two boundary elements, uh, uh, the two boundary cases, I equals zero and I equals P, you have to drop elements. That's the only way to get rid of M0 and, or to get rid of MP. So this, this is where these formulas come from that I mentioned earlier with the differential for, for group code, for, for group code chains. 
so the differential uh, for group code chains gen then generalizes in this way to uh, differential on group void code chains. It's really the same formula as before. Uh, sometimes we need uh, different variations of this complex. Uh, th there's a so-called normalized subcomplex uh, defined by the property that pullbacks on all degeneracy maps are equal to zero. So sometimes it's relevant to work with that normalized complex. And sometimes um, um, I have to work with a norm, uh, localized complex where instead of working with all functions on BG, you just work with germs of functions along the group units. So, so the uh, groupoid units, the groupoid units sit inside BPG as just trivial P arrows, it's P arrows, which ne nothing ever happens. Right. And for a Lie groupoid, we have the corresponding Lie algebroid, which as a vector bundle is just a normal bundle. The anchor comes from source minus target. And uh, the bracket comes from left invariant vector fields. And we have the Lie algebroid complex. All right. And now we want to compare the groupoid complex uh, and the Lie algebroid complex. So let's first give an example. So the simplest example uh, for the situation is that you take the pair groupoid. For the pair groupoid, uh, this uh, space of p arrows just becomes n to the power p plus one. I guess it's a typo again, it just should be at p. So it's just uh, p plus one copies of m. So our, our complex is smooth functions on m to the power p plus one. And the differential is an alternating sum uh, where you just drop one of the entries. So this is uh, what this simplicial differential is in this case. And you can ask, uh, what is the cohomology? And I guess probably most of you know what the cohomology is in this case. Um, well, cohomology is just zero. It's not interesting. It is just trivial cohomology. So that's, that's kind of disappointing, of course. But if you modify it a little bit and work with a localized complex instead, so if you look, look at germs along the diagonal, then it has non-trivial cohomology and it's just the Dram cohomology. And this is known as the alexander spanier complex. So this is one way of, of calculating the Dram cohomology of a manifold, just using functions. Yeah, actually, it's a general fact uh, for any proper Lie groupoid uh, that the groupoid co-chain complex actually is trivial cohomology. This was already in Marius's paper in 2003. So one can write down an explicit homotopy operator, and of course, that's, that's relevant for us. Okay, so we need the double complex. So the, to define the double complex, uh, I introduce uh, space EG. So BG is like the classifying space and EG is the corresponding principal G bundle. And one way of describing it is, is a space of um, P plus one elements in the group by G, all of which have the same source. And yeah, this comes with the map to, um, to BG given by taking quotients. And this is a principal G bundle in the, in the world of groupoids, of course. So th th there's some anchor map, uh, which you need to define the G action. That's just the common source. And this quotient map is, as I said, um, well, taking su successive quotients of, of, of these groupoid elements. So we have the space EG, which in the case of, of, a, of a group, by the, by the way, is, is just G to the P times G. That's the same thing we, we considered before. And this EG is again a simplicial manifold. It's actually a simplicial principal bundle. Right, now what's important for us is because it's a principal bundle, uh, there's a foliation just I mean, there's uh, the tangent bundle uh, to the fibers. And so we have fiber-wise differential forms. And this is the uh, double complex that we need to use. 
the foliated, the, the forms long fibers of this EG. And this complex uh, appears first in Marius's paper. And so this is what we call the Van S double complex because it's, it's the direct generalization of Van S double complex to, to the groupoid case. So you have to look at differential forms along the fibers of this EG principal bundle. We have the Durham differential and there's the simplicial differential. So two differentials. Here's again our picture uh, of the double complex uh, with two augmentation maps. So the complex for BG uh, just includes by pullback because we have the map from EG to BG, uh, there's a pullback map. And uh, this map from um, wedge of A star also includes, but basically by thinking of elements of wedge of A star as left invariant differential forms. So in the world of uh, group points, left invariant forms are forms uh, that are just leafwise defined. They're not actual differential forms in the usual sense. They're just leafwise differential forms. Okay, so we're in, in our situation again. We have a double complex, two augmentation maps. Now we want a homotopy operator. And the nice fact is there is a canonical homotopy operator. And you can understand it very, very conceptually. Uh, and yeah, in, in the paper with, with David, we explain this. Uh, so it, it follows from this abstract nonsense um, construction of, of EG as a classifying space that EG is contractible. In this case, EG contractible means it contracts onto M as a simplicial manifold. In the world of simplicial manifolds, there's retraction onto M. And from this retraction, you get a homotopy operator. So there, there's some machinery how you can actually um, construct this homotopy operator. So, so earlier on, I, I sort of guessed it again and I explained that I don't like uh, guessing anything, but even the homotopy operator, we don't have to guess. It's, it's completely canonically and conceptually defined because there's this canonical and conceptual retraction. So we have a horizontal homotopy, homotopy operator and so we get our Van S differentiation map as before. The question is, what is this map? Yeah, and this was already answered in this paper with David. So this, this differentiation map we obtain is exactly the Van S map that was constructed by Weinstein and Xu. So now, now maybe I should say briefly what that map is. So it lands in uh, sections of wedge of A star, so I should stick in P uh, elements of the D algebraid to obtain uh, a number. And what we do is um, we take these elements, these sections of our Lie algebra, uh, we uh, take Lie derivatives of a function using various uh, vector fields, take an alternating sum, and, and, um, and that's the answer. And then, and then eventually restrict uh, to the units. So that's, that's the formula. So there, there are various vector fields in the picture again. Uh, because there are various uh, group actions in the picture. So details are maybe not so important, but so there, there's this explicit formula, which again is also the standard Van S formula uh, in the group case. So you use all these different group actions to, to get the actual formula. So if you work this out, what it means in this example I had uh, with a pair group point, it's this map. So smooth functions on M to the P plus one go to differential forms. Um, um, I'm just looking at smooth functions, which are tensor products of P plus one functions. And yeah, just take F zero, DF one, DF two, DF three up to DFP. It's a kind of well-known formula also, of course. So this is the explicit map that gives uh, the isomorphism between uh, this Alexander Spanier cohomology and uh, Durham cohomology. Uh, if you look at uh, on on on, uh, on localized chains, yeah. Now, now we're also interested in vertical homotopies. As the five minutes, I believe. Um, of course, for that I, sh I should assume more or less that the groupoid is contractible, and that's a bit of a strong assumption. 
so 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 now in these final five minutes, I, I can finally start to cheat a little bit. So our, our starting point is that uh, we use this notion of a tubular structure uh, introduced in the paper of uh, Cabrera, Marcout, and Salazar. So this is a tubular neighborhood embedding of the Lie algebraoid into the Lie groupoid, which takes uh, the Lie algebraoid fibers, fibers as a vector bundle, into the groupoid fibers if you just look at the target. And it sh should be a tubular neighborhood embedding, by which I mean uh, the differential along the group units, uh, groupoid units should be the identity map. And so for the purposes of these final five minutes, I will pretend that this is a diffeomorphism. So in practice, of course, uh, you have to work with an actual tubular neighborhood or you have to work with germs or functions, something like that. But I mean, it's not impossible that this uh, global diffeomorphism, it, it mean, does happen, but doesn't happen often. Now, the other fact one, one uh, can use is, is that for every given P, uh, this principal G bundle that we had before is actually trivial. I mean, in the group case, it's, it's yeah. sort of obvious because the principal one is just G, G to the P plus one. Surely it's trivial over G to the P and it's also trivial in the work of group points. But this is only um, valid for any given P. So if you view this as a simplicial principal bundle, it's not trivial because the trivialization is not a simplicial map. But for any given P, it's, 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 it's just a principal bundle which happens to be trivial. And because it's trivial, my tubular structure then gives a retraction of, of my principal bundle onto its base. And then I get a homotopy operator. So this is the vertical homotopy operator we can use. And once we have the hom vertical homotopy operator, then uh, the machinery kicks into gear and it directly gives me my cochain map. So the vertical homotopy operator gives a Van Est integration map automatically. We don't have to check anything uh, about being a cochain map. It, that this all comes for free already and the only question remains is, uh, yeah, what actually is this uh, Van Est integration map? Yeah, as, as before, um, we, we can uh, check directly how this uh, vertical homotopy operator interacts with the horizontal operator, uh, with the horizontal homotopy operator that this condition H compose K equals zero is satisfied. So we know also already that this uh, Van S integration map that we obtain is a right inverse to the Van S differentiation map. But still the question remains, what is this map? And unsurprisingly, it's uh, of course exactly this Van S integration map from the paper of uh, Alejandro, Junut, and Maria. So it's, it's given by the same kind of formula that, that I already explained in the group case. Uh, there's a map gamma from uh, P arrows. Uh, so for, excuse me, for, for any given P arrow, G1 through GP, there's a map gamma, which goes from a unit cube into the group point G. Uh, the way it is obtained is you start in the units and you just apply element G sub P, you rescale apply G sub P minus one and so on. So there's this map. And uh, yeah, we, we just um, view this alpha as a left invariant differential form, pull back under this map and integrate and we get a number. So that's, that's what this map is. But yeah, notice in this uh, three author paper, they actually had to check uh, by direct calculation that this is a code chain map. And yeah, the direct check is not so easy. And also the fact uh, that it's the right inverse is, is not, not a very easy check. So now not all comes for free. The only place where we put in, in some work is, is to actually verify that this is what the map is. Right, so I'm, I'm basically at the end of my talk. Um, in this paper with Maria, we also discussed a little bit uh, in, in the direction of um, the second Van S theorem. The second Van S theorem having to do with homogeneous spaces G mod K. So there's this is a corresponding discussion in the paper of Marius. And so we 
explain a little bit how, how to understand this with, with uh, perturbation lemma. Um, already in the paper with, with David, uh, we looked at Van S differentiation also for this uh, more complicated setting, which is very interesting for um, Poisson geometry, of course, um, where you start uh, with a more complicated uh, group or groupoid complex of where you don't just look at smooth functions on VG, but actually differential forms on VG. Uh, so also known as, um, as the Bott-Schulman complex. And it lands in not, not uh, the chevalier einberg complex, but lands in a, a veil algebra. So the, the corresponding differentiation map is, is sort of understood also using perturbation lemma. The integration map is not so well understood yet. And, and so this is certainly something that Maria and I, I believe still wanna look at a bit closer. And we expect uh, that all of this also uh, works in, in somewhat greater generality with, with uh, say, double groupoids, LA groupoids, and, and, and so on, double E algebroids. And uh, for that, uh, the first step is th that you need a corresponding veil algebra, which was worked out in, in, in thesis of uh, Jeff Pike, who's, I believe, in the audience. Um, so, so, so that veil algebra is now in place, but we still need to uh, work out the corresponding Van S map also. And I believe that's it, yeah. So thank you very much and stay safe, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, are, there, are there some questions? I have a very vague question. So um, I see what you're doing with these groupoids. Now, of course, like Siegel's work doesn't just work for groupoids, right? It works for any category as long as the objects and the maps are smooth. Would what you're doing give anything interesting in that case? Does it even make sense? I mean. Well, I, I believe I, I don't have a good, good answer to that. I mean, I would certainly expect that it works for more fancy things, I mean, more, more fancy kind of group points, two group points or something like this, which, which I don't know anything about. But yeah, so, so I, I guess in, in, in general, I don't have a good, good answer. Of course, also the, the perturbation lemma works in many, many contexts. Yeah, that sort of that part works for sure. And e.g. That, that works. Right, you, you, you might expect maybe some, some framework with, with this uh, one example I gave uh, with, with Czech de Ram and, and the group point example might actually get unified. I mean, uh, I don't have, yeah, the, answer, the answer is I don't know. Hmm? Question, right? And I don't know. Hmm. But, okay, thanks. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. In that case, for category, we don't even know what's the infinitesimal object, right? For group point, we know the infinitesimal is the algebra. Right. Yeah, certainly, certainly I don't know what, what if in ten, so I guess some other people you may know better, but it's certainly not me. On mm. uh, the other hand, but, but maybe something like uh, a, a lead to group and a lead to algebra, probably that's, that's okay. okay. So if mm. you have a lead to group, then the lead to algebra, you also know the Schoeller Allenberg of the lead to algebra. That's very mm. explicit. Mm. Yeah, and I remember Camilo Angulo has, has thought about the veil algebras for the two groups, I believe. And yeah, so it's, maybe he's even looked a little bit at Van Est in, in his thesis, I, I can't remember. So, so yeah, there, there should be more fancy settings, um, um, I would expect. Okay, um, more questions and comments? There's a few uh, raised hands, maybe. Oh, oh, um, did I, oh, I'm sorry. I can, um, I can do that, I can do that, yeah. So uh, Alejandro, would you like to ask your question? Uh, yes, um, okay, hi, Eckhart. Hi, Alejandro. I, I, it's more like a comment in the last part when you mentioned about Schulman with forms, there is this trick that you can see forms as functions or uh, ordinary code chains mm -hmm. on um, DB groupoid, so maybe that already gives you more or less the answer from what it was done before. That's that's true, yeah. Um, if you like, can yeah, you but, but, but still, but still, I'm I'm not not really uh, happy with the status of, of integration map. There should be something that's a bit 
a bit easier, more, more direct to apply. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I believe already in, in, in uh, Raj's thesis in 2006, it, it, it was mentioned that, uh, that you can uh, regard the, uh, the, the Van S map, um, the, the classical Van S map for group voids gives uh, a Van S map for forms if you uh, think of it in, in a super context. If you apply yeah. it to, to super manifolds. Well, but there is a version that doesn't use actually super jump. It's just to put a bunch of copies mm -hmm. of TG together. And yeah, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in, in your paper with. Um, yeah. With the other, yes. Yeah. Anyway, it's just a comment that maybe this helps. <laughs> right. Nikolai? And Camilo, Camilo has Camilo. a question? Uh, yes. Uh, hello, very good to see so many friends. So uh, I, I do have a question for Eckhart. So uh, a lot of your talk is about uh, writing inverses for the Van Ness map, but th there's a different paper you wrote, I think with Anton, where you construct, uh, use the non-community Bay algebra to construct uh, differential forms in the in the Schulman complex, which I think is also an, an, an inverse to the Van Ness map in the sense that if you if you write the map that you constructed with Anton and then compose with the Van Ness map, then you get, you get uh, well, the identity in, in cohomology. So this is, in a sense, a different way of constructing uh, inverses for Van Ness. So my question is, uh, is uh, have you thought about the relationship between those two constructions, be, between the construction with the non completely Bay algebra and what you explained here? No, I, I haven't, yeah. I think I probably sort of forgot about this construction with Anton. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I like this non-commutative term veil very much, but yeah, but, but this, this construction I kind of forgot about and I haven't checked what, what, what it has to do with, with, with this work. Yeah, yeah good, good question, yeah. <laughs> and Marco has a question. Marco? Hi. Um, I'm just wondering, could you go back uh, to your last slide, I think, second to last? Oh, yeah. Could you say a little bit more about the first bullet point, about what the Van Ness map uh, is in that case, and what kind of Q you're considering? Oh, um, yeah, so, so we, we need uh, proper groupoid actions on on on. on Manifolds, and, and then we look at uh, G invariant differential forms on Q. I mean, the, the, so the, as I said, the, the setting is of course described already in, in Marius's paper. So, so, so you look at uh, G invariant differential forms on Q. So the analog um, which we had in the group case was G invariant differential forms on on the homogeneous space G mod K. So in, instead of homogeneous space G mod K, you you now look at the more general manifold Q. So the differential um, forms on Q, the G invariant differential forms on Q, that would be the infinitesimal of the Van S? Right. And, um, <laughs> oh gosh, where does it go again? I, I don't think I've brought a print out of my paper. <laughs> but, um, but I'm just asking, there's no infinite, there's no differentiation being applied to Q itself. It's Q is uh, just, um, like there's no infinitesimal object that replaces Q. Oh no no, Q is is so to speak the the infinitesimal side. So so the integration uh, map uh, go, goes from uh, G invariant differential forms on Q to uh, the the complex uh, on the group or G. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, so there's, there's also no no global thing having to do with Q if I remember correctly. Yeah. So it's it's, it's the analog to to what we had. In, in the group case, uh, where you went from different from invariant differential forms on on the homogeneous space G mod K uh, to the K basic subcomplex of wedge of T star, I believe. Uh, no, so, so to what I'm saying uh, to to, um, to uh, the, the the group uh, co-chain complex. Yeah, for, for the integration map, I, I think one, one needs to, to have another assumption that uh, this map from Q to M also has a section or something like that. Yeah, so there's some conditions and, and then there's some 
extra conditions which explain in in, in, in what cases uh, this become this integration map becomes a right inverse so 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 we were discussing this a little bit in our paper I, I I don't think we have any particularly interesting examples for that setting one one more question can you hear me no I didn't hear yes okay can you hear me no ah. yeah, yeah. Okay, this is Jim. Um, to a few historical comments. The crucial lemma uh, was, in fact, very much the way things looked in the very early days when it was called homological perturbation theory. The reason it's called perturbation is hiding in your use of the inverse, which is really expanded as an exponential. Uh, next. Your integral over the cube, is there any relation to Chen's iterated integrals? I'm afraid I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Just a know. When you get to the um, foliation case, uh, it's perhaps worth mentioning, not for this problem, but adjacent to it, the work of Heffliger uh, uh -huh. on classifying spaces for foliations. Mm -hmm. um, oh, where'd it go? I guess that's it. Thank you very much. It was fascinating to see some of these things resurrected. I was actually an undergraduate at Michigan when Van Est was visiting. Oh. And, and there is a question by Travis. Yeah, I, sorry, I asked everybody this stupid question, but I just wanted to know, uh, so, so what is the CE differential when you have functions on G? And also, and I wanted to know what this lambda, what this lambda T is actually mean. Uh, this differential DCE, uh, I think I, I never spelled it out. Um, so this this is a Chevrolet Eilenberg differential on a wedge of G star. So well, on the I know for the wedge of G star, but when you had functions on G valued in in that. Um, uh, At the um, beginning, you said that you have to use this principal action. So you're using the action of the last oh. factor. So then, uh, is this like a Duram differential? I mean, I don't understand what to, what it meant that C E differential for functions on G. Um, so, so uh, one perspective is that you have a Chevrolet Eilenberg differential for um, G representations. And in this case, uh, the G representation, uh, sorry, to go back further. Uh, in this case, the G representation uh, was uh, the action on smooth functions on G to the P times G. Right. Well, but the G action on the space was, was just pullback under multiplication on the last factor. So it was a very simple G action. Just right. the principal so, action. So that, that, that's, that's, Chevel what, what Chevrolet Eilenberg is this? Is, so usually I thought that Chevrolet Eilenberg was for a Lie algebra or maybe a Lie algebra with coefficients in a Lie algebra representation. But now. Yeah, but, but this was there. No, you, that was, it was there, I think. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, gosh. No, it was, it was there. Uh, did I miss it already? No. Too many slides. I think it was um, it was mm -hmm. where you were. Um, where when, where you go back to the Lie algebra, then you. I mean, it's, it's the space which is here. Yeah. Yeah. Right there, yeah. 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 So you have this functions on G valued in that. So I know on the uh, uh, for the values uh, how to do a Chevalier-Eilenberg, but what does it mean when you have the G? Well, well I mean, I, I think of the space as. Uh, C infinity of G to the P times G tensored yeah. with wedge Q of G star. And you want to view that first thing as a representation then of yes. the Lie algebra. So the first case is an infinite dimensional vector space with the GD action. Mm -hmm. But and now so you said that you only wanted to use the last act, the last factor here. You said that they said the principal action of the last factor. If you go forward, yeah. it's the last group bit. factor, yeah. So you're so not G using the P other factors or oh, the, this G to the P doesn't play any role in this part. So that it's a trivial it's, action there. You're just, just acting trivial action, yeah. G only on the G by left multiplication. That's right. Mm -hmm. I see. So then you take the Lie algebra with coefficients in that. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. I didn't understand that. And the other so thing I, that I can also view this complex like I did later as smooth functions on G to the P with values in differential forms on G. Right, and then you use a Duram differential, right? And then it's just a Duram differential on differential forms. Yeah, that's what I thought. But, and what about this lambda? How do you define that? Lambda, which uh, this lambda sub t? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was the thing that came up. You had this isomorphism between g mod k, k and the Lie algebra g mod Lie yep. algebra k. Then you say from this, you get this lambda sub t. I didn't understand what the lambda sub t. Oh, lambda sub t. Uh, Oh, there you are. The yeah, area. I didn't quite spell it out. Yes, that, that's what, by, by this I mean the retraction. So this is. But you have a nice over, over permutation, just multiplication by t. G mod k is a vector space, and of 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 the multiplication by t. Oh, you, when my, so you use isomorphism when you transport the the scaling, the dilation by that. Yes, so, yes, yes. That's why, what is I mean. it, why are you considering that a retraction? You mean a, you mean that's part of the, the retraction to zero? That's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. And so then you do multiply on the left, but this G is uh, interspersed with this scaling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a re retraction of the homogeneous space G mod K onto uh, its base point. I see. Yeah, but why, I mean, why should this composition, uh, what, what's the meaning of this composition here? Why should that give us the map? Well, I mean, uh, it comes out of the calculation. Okay. I mean, it's a, so so it's, it's a kind of map we would like to have. We, have. we have a differential form on G mod K, and we would like to integrate it somehow. Mm -hmm. Right. So 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 there's this map from a P cube into G mod K does exactly what we want because then we can pull it back and then we integrate over the cube. I see. Um, but what, what, how this specific map comes up? It just comes up uh, from the calculation with a zigzag. So we just follow through, uh, we just follow along uh, what it gives us. Okay. No, I may believe you. I just, uh... right. and, and, and I, I suppose it's maybe somewhat believable because um, at each stage, um, we use the drum homotopy operator, which exactly has to do with this retraction. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rui has a question. Mm -hmm. um, hi, hi, um, hi, hi, Hector. Uh, well, uh, beautiful talk. Thanks for the talk. Uh, in your last slides, uh, you were mentioning that you cheated a little bit, uh, that you had this exponential map that in general is not uh, a global diffeomorphism. Mm -hmm. uh, so that suggests that you should work with local groupoids instead there. Yeah, I mean, it depends a little bit on, on what one wants, right? I mean, sometimes, of course, you, you might be in a very special situation where it actually is an uh, isomorphism, or you, you have a very good tubular neighborhood embedding, then you have to work with that image of the tubular neighborhood embedding. Right. But, uh, sometimes you might just want to work with, with germs of things, and, and, and then, uh, yes, sure, uh, it all works for local group it's just as well. So what's, what's in general the, the relationship uh, if you take, like you mentioned that uh, 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 sometimes you want to take this germ cohomology around the, the identity section. Mm -hmm. So what, what's in general the, the relationship between uh, the, the what, what happens with Van Est in general for, for the, germ, the, the germ cohomology? Oh yeah, if, if you use germs, then um, the Van Est method is always an isomorphism. It's actually a quasi isomorphism, and this integration map we uh, right. constructing is an explicit homotopy inverse. And no, not just homotopy inverse, it's an explicit right inverse, which is also homotopy inverse, yeah. Right. And now there is this way of going from a local groupoid to a global groupoid by doing this associative completion or doing like this free construction. Uh, can, you, can you use that to, to understand the relationship between the the cohomology for, I mean, the the, the Van Est map when it when it becomes a an isomorphism, for example, with uh, oh, with this. Yeah. So this, this aspect, uh, I, I don't really have much to add uh, when it becomes an isomorphism. I, I mentioned briefly uh, uh, of, in the usual case due to Van Est and the group part case due to Marius Kreinisch that one knows that up to a certain degree, depending on the connectivity properties, uh, Van S becomes right. an isomorphism. But I, I don't think I have anything to, to add to, to, to that. 
I mean, you may be right. So, so may, maybe with these uh, completion constructions, maybe one one can do something. But but this has certainly not been part of our work at all. Okay. Thank you. Is it just me, or Eckert's microphone is misbehaving? Um, Matthias has a question. Oh, I didn't. I didn't mute myself. Matthias has a question. Hello, Matthias. Huh? Okay. <laughs> he raised his. Hand. Sorry. Hi. Uh, I having problems with the technology, but uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. I hope you can hear me. Okay. Well, thanks, Eckhart. Uh, yeah, I, I think my question was essentially the same as uh, the one posed by Rui. Uh, so just to confirm, uh, so are you saying that this localized complex uh, for an arbitrary Lie group it computes the uh, cohomology of the Lie algebra? Is that true? Yeah, yeah that's, that's definitely true, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, it's just a, yeah, yeah, and, and so, so, so this is uh, integration map gives gives you a way to integrate Lie algebra co-cycles to Lie group point uh, co-cycles like like near the group unit, and and, and then in, in practice it might be a question of if if it somehow extends globally. But uh, I mean, I, I, I kind of doubt it because and in the case of. Because the construction very much depends on the choice of this uh, tubular structure, and so if, if it's just a tubular structure uh, given near the the units, it's hard to imagine how this would be any good globally. I see, and uh, just to confirm, in the case of a, a non-integrable Lie algebra, if you do the same for a local Lie group, but without passing through the completion that uh, Rui was mentioning. Uh, is this also giving you the homology of the algebra? For local, I mean, does that group? make sense to apply this construction? Yeah. Yeah, for for locally group, but yes, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So th this is one of the okay. uh, so this, this localized complex uh, you, you can define for local D group point, and uh, yeah. we, we explicitly give give the differentiation map. And, and the integration map, which is not only in homotopy inverse, but it's actually right inverse. Or I, I should say, uh, we, we, uh, in, in a way, this is already in, in, in the work of uh, Cabrera, Makut, and Salazar, of course. Uh, what we are doing is, is give, giving some explanation of it in terms of perturbation lemma. But yeah. OK. Okay, so many questions. Well, um, I guess no more questions. Um, well, I, I actually have a very lot of I guess so so with this double complex would it will be easy for you to see that um, and, and on the cohomology level, um, you you will have uh, isomorphisms um, given certain connectedness. Yeah, I, I don't think we have anything interesting to add to that, really. I, I, I mean, Not I was, like the checked around. The checked around the double complex really help mm -hmm. you to see that, that they have the same come out and they're the same. I, I, I don't see how, how the story uh, helps with that. I mean, I, I tried to think about it a little bit, but... Okay. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't come up with anything. Okay. Make that any clearer that, than it already is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 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 there are no more questions now, and let's thank Akadi. Welcome. And thanks again. Thanks. <laughs> Fascinating. Brings me back to my youth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks mm -hmm. for coming. <laughs> thanks, Akadi. Thank you.